Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Hi hello my name is Loie and today I'm gonna be changing it up a little bit and finally 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 using my Loie Lane story time email account for the first time in so 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 long. I made this email account for you guys to send me your scary real stories, your fictional stories, your suggestions for topics for me to cover in future videos but honestly I I get so many emails every single day sometimes it gets a little bit overwhelming for me to go in and read everything and then I feel like I'm missing some of you guys and I never want to miss any of your stories so sometimes I kind of neglect that email out of sheer like mental blockage I don't know I don't know how else to explain it but I found this story waiting for me in my email and I knew I had to talk to you guys about it because I just sort of skimmed the first part and what this girl is going through, this woman I should say, and her poor son are enduring, I just really had to talk about it because it seemed so weird. She seems genuinely scared in her email and genuinely like freaked out. Like she specifically said in the email, I'm telling you this because like, why else would I tell anybody, you know what I mean? Like, it, cause she feels like she sounds crazy. I really also kind of just hope we can band together like as a community and as a family and hopefully give her some answers. I don't know if she wants her real name out there so I'm going to name her Ruby in the story. She basically says that she really loves my videos and then says that it's really nice to know that other people are experiencing crazy things just like her. All of these things I'm about to tell you started happening when I was pregnant, so I guess this ghost really loves babies. So everything I'm going to talk to you about in this video has kind of happened around her son. She found out she was pregnant with him in 2016, so she said everything kind of started in like January slash February of that following year. Basically everything kind of started and every time I read this phrase from her I just get chills all up and down my body because I can't explain to you how creepy this must must have been. Basically she's in the car with her mom and her grandmother and they're on their way to her first, well probably not her first, but her 12 week scan. And she looks into the rear view mirror just checking things out and behind her she sees this old woman just driving the car that is behind them, which seems pretty inconspicuous. But the woman had this huge, wide, unnatural grin spread across her face. She was all alone in the car and basically they were at a red light and it stayed like this. The woman stayed like this with this huge creepy, like the way that she described it was unnatural. Like something was a little bit off here. Grin on her face the entire time they're at that red light. And it really weirded her out but trust me, it doesn't stop there. She also noticed throughout her entire pregnancy that people were just sort of staring at her more, like standing at windows into places that she was in and just staring at her. And she said they could have just been people watching or just checking stuff out, but she just felt really unnerved because it seemed to be happening all of the time. Her son was born and unfortunately he was a premature baby so she was at the hospital all of the time the first four months of his life. She was basically living at the hospital with him as any mother would in that situation. I can't even begin to fathom how hard that must have been and the amount of strength that that would have had to take. But she started noticing really strange things around this time. She would see like black figures out of the corner of her eye and what she describes is weird metallic shadows, which I've never really heard of before, but sounds pretty eerie to me. She would also see figures, like what would look like a spider, moving across the floor, but she would move or jump or do something and check again and there would never be anything there. One night while she's there with her son, again, all of the time because I'm sure she's just the most amazing mama in the world, she's just basically off trying to find a vending machine so she can get herself a snack. I recently have been in the hospital a lot because my mom was in a car accident so I can kind of attest to this. At a certain point, all of the shops and cafes and like cafeterias will close down so you kind of have to go on a hunt for a vending machine or leave the hospital altogether. So she She's going on a hunt for a late night vending machine and as she is she's kind of walking through the dining area of like a cafe or a cafeteria and she notices a man 
sitting alone in this darkened area by himself at a table. This is pretty weird, but she says hello to him as you probably would to anyone you see alone in the middle of the night. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like she's not in a hospital where there are other people. It's not like this is in her living room or something. It's like a hospital and maybe he just needed a quick hello because other people are going through scary and sad stuff. So she greets him and he looks at her and he has that same unnatural grin on his face and it like it sends chills up and down my body to think about this that same unnatural creepy grin that the old lady in the car behind her all of those months before that had and that's the way that she described it that it like transplanted her back into that moment and that's what she saw was just this man with this huge, huge, creepy, unnatural grin on his face. She says that maybe she overreacted, but it freaked her out so bad, she just turned around and ran back to her son's room, and that she couldn't shake this feeling that it was the same thing here, that it was the same kind of like entity or evilness or whatever it was, really, smiling back at her. That entire night she's in her son's room super freaked out and she said that the way that she felt was basically like she was being watched and like something very very evil was present and when you are with your son in the hospital going through something so hard already I can't even imagine how hard that must have been to add into the mix. Her son has now luckily left the hospital though. He will be a year old in May. We are both May babies, although I'm significantly an older May baby than him. But unfortunately, she still noticed a lot of really bizarre things happen around her son. She says pretty much from the minute that he came home, she has noticed that he'll wake up in the super early hours of the morning. I don't know exactly what time or anything like that but that he'll wake up really, really, really early in the morning, which babies of course do, but when he cries, it's not like a, I'm hungry, I'm stressed, like come love me, you know what I mean? I need my diaper changed. It's like a scared, like distressed, freaked out, screaming cry. Like something has scared him. And like when you're a parent, I mean, I'm not even a parent, but I've worked around kids like most of my life. I used to work in a nursery at my church. You know the difference between different cries. You know what I mean? Maybe you don't know like the difference between I'm hungry and change me the minute that you hear it, but like you know when your child is scared. And he was genuinely, genuinely scared every time that he was doing this. She says that they're big dog people, they have four dogs who obviously love her baby, and oh, that makes me so happy, that's what I want one day. They're like his guardians, you know what I mean? Like they wanna be around him, they wanna protect him, they wanna be with him. And they always used to sleep in his room until three months ago. And she said that nothing significant happened, but three months ago they suddenly decided they don't want anything to do with his room, and if she leads them there or if they go there, they act petrified by his room and they will no longer go in. This is a baby. This isn't like a kid who's like pulling on their fur and scaring them. This is a baby that they would be in a room with. What on earth happened that they're that afraid to go into his room now? She said that she'll hear footsteps in the middle of the night knocking on the doors and the windows. She'll turn off a light and suddenly it'll come back on and lights will switch themselves on and off all of the time. Hear faint whispers that she really can't make out when nobody's there. And she said, and I think this is one of the most unnerving things, that sometimes she'll enter her son's room and things have moved on their own. And again, this is a one-year-old child that cannot move things by himself. It's like she'll put a toy on the shelf and I understand maybe you get tired sometimes and you put things away where they don't need to go away but it's like she'll put it on a shelf where she knows it's supposed to go, she'll leave the room and she'll come back and it'll be on the other side of the shelf. Like things like that where it's like you can't just explain that away. Sometimes she hears him like laughing and babbling to nobody at night which is really unnerving and more recently she started finding his toys in places beyond just the wrong side of the shelf in places nobody would put them like on top of the fridge or inside of the coal shed that she keeps sorry if you hear like screaming in the background that's my chihuahua don't get a chihuahua they make the weirdest noises she said there are other things that she's not really talking about in her email to me because she doesn't acknowledge them 
because they do seem so sinister to her that I think she just doesn't want to give them power. She doesn't want to acknowledge them happening. I think that's very smart and I am genuinely scared knowing there's more than even what is in this email to me. She was basically talking to her neighbor one day about all of this, just like, yeah, this is really weird, like, you know, just going through ghost stories. And her neighbor texted her this. You'll love this, lol. The church next to you, most of the people buried there are people who died from the plague. Then when it got out of hand, obviously they couldn't bury them all properly, so they threw all the bodies in the plague pits, and the plague pits were in the woods, where our houses are now. Not sure how true that is, but people have said when our houses were being built, they found a couple of bones, which is why we don't want to have cellars, since they don't want to disturb the mass grave. And also that for the first few years, whoever lived in our houses would find the odd bone or two in their gardens was apparently on the news and everything. That is terrifying to think about that she could literally have this house on like a mass grave site. You know what I mean? Like anything could be there and like in a site where bodies were so disrespected and people's last resting places were so violated. Like they didn't even get their own burial sites. They were all thrown into a pit. And then those pits were basically like built on top of, I can't even imagine what kind of energy is there. But basically at the end of her email, she kind of concludes by saying she's really, really frightened that something has latched itself primarily onto her son. This all started happening when she was pregnant. She had mentioned, you know, scary things happening to her, but all of this really started happening when she found out she was pregnant with her son. And now everything is centered around her son. I really want to send a lot of love to this girl's way. I think I named her Ruby in the beginning of this. Um, she seems super duper duper nice. Ruby, I love you so much. Thank you for supporting me and my channel. And I hope that we can come together and maybe think of some ways to help her out. She says right now, it's scary. It doesn't seem too harmful, but it is getting worse and worse as time progresses. So what do you guys think of this? I think this is such a scary story and I really wanted to jump on here onto my channel and tell it to you guys. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how we can help her and any advice that we can send her way, especially when there's a child involved. It just makes you so like scared you know what i mean because like an innocent baby is being involved in this and there's really nothing anyone can do but i hope that we can come up with some answers and someone smarter than me and more knowledgeable than me in spirits can help us um kind of get to a solution for this so anyways thank you guys so much for watching if you like the style of video let me know by going ahead and giving me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i don't know why i started doing this in my outro it's like just me pandering asking for that subscribe one final time because youtube doesn't like to show our videos in subscriptions anymore just hoping that if we subscribe enough maybe the glitch will fix itself anyways you guys i love you so very much thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already love you and i'll see you in the next video Bye.